course, to our latest edition of In the Hot Seat, a panel discussion focused on how technology is solving today's problems. Uh, these panel discussions are part of ScanSource's Discover Opportunities Initiative, and I'm pleased to be speaking today with two of our uh, supplier partners and industry experts who are going to help you, our partners, discover opportunities uh, in the mobility space. So this uh, series is focused on mobility. Uh, it's a three-part series. Uh, we will naturally have some, uh, some similar themes along the way. Uh, but to cry, try to create some uniqueness in this one, we're going to discuss uh, managing estates of mobile devices as one of our themes. Uh, so let's start by meeting our two panelists today. Kristen, I'll start with you. Would you mind uh, introducing yourself and your role? Not at all. So I am Kristen Rambe. I'm the Director of Business Development for ELO Touch Solutions, and I focus primarily on the Pro AV, interactive signage, and mobility space. I've been Great. with ELO for going on seven years. Great, thank you. And a, uh, a veteran of in the hot seat panel discussions. I, have uh, I can't remember the other topic, but uh, uh, definitely a familiar face. So welcome, uh, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. And uh, the, the new, new guy, the new face, Richard, uh, you'll thank introduce you. yourself. Hi, oh, yes, thanks. I'm Richard Barrett. So I am the global product manager for EMC software here at Zebra. Um, being here for about, you know, just over six months now, but as far as being in the product management space is concerned, it's been over 15 years, so nice great. to meet you guys. Yeah, great. Glad, glad you're here. Um, you. So I'll start this uh, session the way we, we always start these sessions, a um, little softball question for you. Uh, Kristen, I'll, I'll start with you ladies first. Um, tell us a little bit about where you're seeing technology being deployed these days. Uh, and what kinds of problems it's solving. And with today's theme, um, if you're seeing technology being deployed to enable a mobile experience, even better. <laughs> All right. I like softball questions. It makes yeah. my life a little easier. Uh, so where we're really seeing mobile technology play in the commercial space with our ruggedized devices, it's bridging the gap between the information and content that consumers are used to having at their fingertips, whether it's online or on their phone. And then it, while they're in store, in restaurant, whatever the experience may be, now they have that information the associates do at their fingertips. So they're able to immediately speak to availability, location of the product, go through features, um, whatever it may be, it's truly giving that same experience and the same messaging that they got when they were at home before they went to the store. So that's really what I'm seeing a lot of the enablement that mobile technology is doing. It's really just bridging that gap and also increasing efficiencies because that information is in the palm of the associate's hands. Yeah. Uh, Richard, how about from, from you guys, Zebra and EMC? Yeah, so I know in general, I, I when it comes to mobile technology, you know, companies are they're leveraging mobile tech to pretty much drive efficiencies um, and visibility and meet customer demand. And, you know, from what I've seen so far being here, it's being used across many verticals. So like, you know, for retail, you have you know, financial systems. In healthcare, you have like patient records management, you know, tra transportation and logistics, just to name a few. But to answer your question at a very high level, I think the fact that, you know, a lot of companies today, they need information in order to make decisions. And through mobile tech, a lot of data that can be gathered through, you know, usage um, patterns and stuff like that. So customers today, um, in addition to just, you know, running their business, they need and can depend on data that can be generated from mobile usage, right? Be it in the enterprise or if you're a consumer um, to help them run a more efficient business. Yeah, and uh, Chris, and I think, you were uh, almost hitting on uh, customer experience and and uh, developing and maintaining brands. So, like those are really important, obviously, in the, the um, retail and in hospitality right. services industries uh, with customers. And so, uh, you guys both had the same same themes there with uh, efficiencies and all that stuff for the internal for em employees, right. uh, which is great. But we we uh, we know today's consumer demands a mobile experience. They, they demand apps. They demand uh, to have a, an experience similar in, in uh, 
on site as they do with the whatever the digital properties are. So, uh, yeah, this is um, a great a great opportunity uh, to to uh, talk to customers about what problems they're trying to solve, both internal and uh, how they interact with their customers. Uh, Absolutely, Richard, and I see oh. a shift in. I'm so sorry. I see a no, shift you know, in that retail and hospitality space, where you know, within transportation and um, healthcare, they've had uh, and embraced mobile technology um, faster, and they're growing. And but when you get into an experiential type environment where customers want information and they want it tailored to them that's where we're seeing uh, a lot of growth and a lot of opportunity to go in and speak to your customers. You might've been talking and um, selling them fixed point of sale systems historically. Now you can take payment and uh, give them, you know, again, location information for products at the point of decision-making. So it, it really is just amplifying that experience which is similar to online where you're just point and click and you're going exactly where you wanna go at that moment. And that's something that COVID has really amplified for us. We want that instant gratification and you know, arming your store associates or hospitality associates with that mobile technology is giving the extension of that experience. Yeah, let's not forget that uh, especially now consumers, um, have less brand loyalty than they ever have. And they're also willing to go to your competitor immediately. One bad experience and they're gone. So uh, capitalizing, as you said, that instant gratification, capitalizing on an ability to sell or have a positive experience with our customer immediately and not let them have the, the ability to walk away uh, from your brand or your product without making your purchase is, is critical. Uh, Richard, you, well, you both now mentioned transportation. Uh, Richard, you broke spades on that and mentioned it first. So I'm going to ask you, but where, where are you seeing uh, mobility being deployed in uh, the transportation space? What, what are we trying to solve there? Yeah, so I think one of two, two quick things I want to talk on. So when it comes to like the trucking industry, um, just like managing assets, right? There's a lot of OPEX that's expended when it comes to managing you know, assets, tracking where they are, um, and you leveraging that, not just to track the assets, but even just track the trucks themselves and, you know, how fast are they getting from A to B? Um, you know, is it efficient? Uh, do we need to have more trucks? Um, and then from the point of view of the end user, the consumer, being able to, you know, all of us have ordered stuff off of Amazon, right? Um, or, or any, 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 you know, uh, online like store. So being able to track in real time, you know, where's your package? When am I going to get it? Um, and then even having that simple experience as a consumer where you can see, okay, your package has been delivered and you see a picture of it in front of your door, you know, that really enhances that experience. So I see that being leveraged a lot there. Um, and then one other area in transport is in the public transit industry. Um, I call it the Uber model, right? Where you can just, you know, um, we have the thing called mobility as a service. And that's a, a terminology whereby on your phone or on your tablet, you can actually select multiple modes of transport to get you from A to B. So if you're a paratransit user, for example, in a wheelchair, you can get on your phone and you can actually get a paratransit, specialized paratransit bus to pick you up from home, take you to the, to the train station where you can go from there uh, on your trip, right? So I think, you know, th thanks to, you know, the advent in 4G and 5G technology where, you know, we have high, high data speeds now coming to our devices, um, I find that the transportation industry, both you know, in the private sector when it comes to trucking and then in the public public transit space, it, mo the mobile influence is really is take taking hold of that those verticals. So, yeah, I uh, I'm glad you mentioned uh, location tracking and yep. and speed tracking and. Uh, I don't know if I was on camera while you were talking, but I immediately started smirking because I have teenage I have a teenage driver. Uh, and it's not, it's not MDM, it's not mobility, but it's life 360. And I can tell you where he is <laughs> yes. and uh, how fast he went before he got there and what route he took to get there. So, uh, all these consumer products are starting to become enterprise applications. That one probably went the opposite direction. That probably started as an enterprise application and became, yeah. uh, uh, consumed by the, the general public. Um, Our poor kids these days with the yeah. 360. 
we're we're way off topic here, but uh, my uh, my kids have a Life Three Hundred and Sixty group with their friends, uh, oh. which blows my mind. I don't know why you would ever want your friends to always know where you are, but whatever. That's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> It's, a, it's the joys of having a teenage driver at home. Uh, so I said in the green room, I probably won't get to this question, but I'm going to ask you anyway, because uh, Richard, you, guys, you just mentioned a transportation example with a purpose-built product, a, 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 a mobility device uh, that the Amazon truck drivers and whatnot are using. And then you used an example with a, a personal device. So your your uh, paratransit example was somebody using their personal device to arrange for a ride in that case. So let's talk a little bit. And if Kristen, you want to start, great. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about the difference between the use cases there. When when do customers? When should customers look at buying purpose built mobility devices versus uh, just using their own mobile device out of their pocket? Well, I think just the way you asked that question says that it's purpose built. It is made to be in that particular industrial space. The battery life is based on that. The durability is based on that. The accessories are based on it being used in a space. And also it gives that enterprise owner, whatever it may be, whether it's transportation, retail, healthcare, whoever owns that device has control over it. So they have control over that data. They have control over what applications are being used. And you know, from an IT perspective, it, you also have a big security mm -hmm. layer in there when you're talking about a purpose commercial built device versus a consumer device. And it really comes down to what you're using it for. And we all know every time you want to do something, you want to do it right, you want something that's purpose built for that use case. And so I'm just going to throw the words right back at you. It's it's made for that application and everything that you need to tick off on what makes a device useful to that associate, whether again, it's a retail, it's a someone waiting tables or someone driving a truck. You want to make sure that it is lasting through their entire shift. The applications that they need that are relevant to them and make them more efficient are you know, one thumb away, uh, very accessible. There's a custom user interface, and then it's also trackable. So you know that enterprise owner can maintain their fleet, manage it, understand what's going on and how it's being used. Yeah, uh, so those are great points and I don't take offense to you throwing my own words back <laughs> at me. Uh, I, I fall into traps of leading the witness with some of these questions from time to time. But, uh, you, you brought up um, some decision-making elements there within an organization. Uh, you know, uh, these are all the, the considerations that the purchaser is making. Uh, let, let, let's say um, a small restaurant is probably not a great example because the decision-making is probably the owner, uh, whoever decided to uh, uh, build that, that little uh, restaurant or that practice. But if you get into a warehouse or something that's larger, bigger workforce, who's making the decisions about which mobility devices to purchase and, and managing the software and all those things? Who, who's the decision maker? Um, I can quickly jump in. So I've seen a lot of times um, it falls back on IT, usually the IT department. Sometimes they're the ones that raise their hands and say, hey, you know what? We want to own this and we can make a decision or it's a lot of the time it's thrown out in their lap as a responsibility, right? Um, and I find too, you know, when they have to make the decision as to, you know, why a purpose-built device, right? Uh, most of the time, 80% 80, 80 of the time, it has to do with performance, right? You know, I find that with purpose-built devices, especially if you have, especially in a, in a large environment, like say in a warehouse, where you might have to have a device that can do more than just send and receive calls. You may need to have to interface to like a scanning engine, be able to you know read or read certain labels and whatnot. So you may need certain hardware, and with that, you would need obviously a certain library of APIs that the device can actually communicate to that scanner engine, whatever through. So with a purpose-built device, you would have those library of APIs there, but more importantly, you would have 
through a rigorous certification process to make sure that the performance is there, right? Because at the end of the day, with a lot of these larger organizations, performance is key and performance has an impact on the OPEX and, you know, it just permeates throughout the company. So uh, that's that's my, 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 my two cents on that, I think, yeah. Yeah, those, those are um, great points. Yeah. Yep. Sorry, Kristen. I, uh, we're uh, about at our goal time, and I haven't yet said the acronym MDM, I don't think. Uh, but let, let, let's talk just quickly about managing all these assets. So um, any thoughts on when the right time to introduce MDM or mobile device management software is? Is it at the initial sale? Um, are there problems that people already experience when they have mobile devices that you then come on over the top with MDM? When's the right time to have that conversation? Oh, I think it's like with anything, software is key. You know, hardware is wonderful. And, but, you know, as Richard was mentioning, you know, you need those APIs and all that to make sure everything works. So software is key and MDM is what makes that all manageable. So that has to be one of the first parts of your selling conversation. And when you're talking about, you know, customer expectations, one of the first questions is, do you guys currently have an MDM? If not, what are you looking to accomplish? That is in our mobile first world now, MDM is, you know, pretty much the second word in, you know, <laughs> after mo mobile hardware. Yeah. Speaking from a mobile hardware manufacturer. <laughs> yeah. I, I agree. At the very beginning, you need to have a conversation because one of the great things about MDM, mobile device management, is you know, it encompasses a lot of different areas, right? When it comes to, you know, if you have, for example, you're a large organization, you have multiple departments, maybe spread out worldwide, and, you know, you have, you know, devices out there, you know, how, how are you going to manage, for example, to ensure that, you know, you have the uh, appropriate amount of whitelisted apps that are allowed to run on those devices? Uh, how are you going to make sure that, you know, Nobody tries to, you know, take pictures of intellectual property through a camera on a device. How can you control that? Or even simple things like making sure that, you know, your firmware updates are sent out to all of your uh, corporate devices at the same time and just managing the device policies, right? All of that is through MDM. And I think to the encompassing, I call it need for MDM, but I've heard from a lot of customers, it all comes back to just security and management, right? So yep. definitely agree with that. Uh, much. Yep. I said, yeah. Okay, well, that's great. Uh, we we uh, naturally created some themes between our, our other uh, episodes of this. So um, that was that's fantastic. Uh, I love I love bringing up security. Uh, Richard, at the very beginning, you got this close to saying IoT. I thought you were going to thought you were going to bring IoT into it, too, which is great. But I mean, we're talking about tremendous, tremendous amounts of devices on networks. Security is important. Uh, latency, 5G, Wi-Fi 6, all those technologies are relevant. So uh, partners, as you're having conversations um, with your customers about their mobile strategies, uh, as Kristen said, MDM should be the second thing out of your mouth. Uh, let's make sure we're, we're uh, recommending software, recommending things that uh, have security in there. Uh, and don't forget about the, the uh, I love the intellectual property comment. Uh, I haven't heard that one before, but that's, that's critical. Uh, especially when we just had the purpose built versus B BYOD uh, conversation. So if you are allowing personal devices in there, uh, you need something like MDM, you need security uh, to make sure you don't have uh, assets walking out the door. So we'll close things off today. Uh, again, thank you, uh, Kristen. Thank you, Richard, for joining us, uh, partners. Um, there's lots more information about our, our uh, mobility space and the opportunities in that space that you can find. Uh, by going to www.scansource.com slash mobility.